It's Wednesday, July 30th, 2020, and welcome back to The Mick Spencer Group. We dress for the kinds of jobs we don't want. Joining me again are Tyler Hamilton and Edward Dutton. Topic two, the end of mass market class. Brooks Brothers has fallen. Sales have declined, factories closed, and thousands of employees furloughed or fired. Bankruptcy now seems imminent. Founded in 1818, Brooks Brothers clothed Civil War soldiers, U.S. presidents, and it was integral in the development of Pret-a-Porter menswear. The fashion house was a foundation stone of what it meant to be preppy. What does Brooks Brothers' demise tell us about consumer behavior and the decline of taste and manners? More broadly, what does it spell for the human condition to be enveloped in plastic uniform garments that suck the soul dry of aspiration and any connection to tradition and meaning? Should luxury be defended? The panel discusses. All right, Brooks Brothers. They've been around since 1818. They clothed Civil War soldiers. I imagine they worked for the Union. Um, they claim to have invented the ready-made suit, although that's in dispute. They also claim to invent, have invented uh, seersucker, or the seersucker suit, rather, although that also is in dispute. I think Haspel might um, be the first on that one. Um, uh, you know, I, I think this is... Uh, I, I wanted to talk about this. It's a lighter subject, um, but I, I, I think it's actually a telling one, and it and it kind of allows us to to expand in, in terms of what's happening with culture. So, uh, in in the around the year two thousand, they were bought out by an Italian uh, billionaire, uh, Del Vecchio, I believe is his name, um, who's who's actually like one of the top fifty wealthiest <laughs> men alive, um, and uh, really. Since the 90s, and then now they're they're apparently going bankrupt. They are furloughing hundreds of employees. They are going to close factories. They were engaged in a bit of uh, a Made in America campaign, uh, which I, I I noticed as you know someone who buys menswear. I do have some Brooks Brothers clothes, not wearing any right now. Um, in in which they not all of their. Um, garments but but um some of their higher end stuff was actually made in america and they certainly advertise that um and uh that seems to be coming to an end and uh so i i i actually do think it's rather sad um i i have a number of brooks brothers staples i have some brooks brothers dress shirts some corduroy pants a, a sweater or two um, I, I'm not a huge Brooks Brothers fan, but I, I do think that they they have some good stuff. Um, but I, they, I I think Brooks Brothers, a, along with you know you could say J Press, you know went a different path. They they maintained a, a kind of higher end um, uh, a actual haberdashery uh, type of company. But it, it is a unique American company, and it is a bastion of the the prep or ivy style um some nautical elements some ivy league elements maybe some english gentleman elements as well if you could buy an ascot somewhere in america um you would probably find one at brooks brothers uh so i i think it's it's kind of a sad state of the decline of culture but i i think it's also kind of a sad state in terms of the the decline of of just men, the the concept of menswear and, and and clothing in general, in the sense that a lot of these companies, the the bigger ones, including Ralph Lauren, who who got his uh, Leibowitz, got his start as in Brooks Brothers as a Brooks Brothers salesman before he became a fashion designer, by the way. Uh, but a lot of them kind of went down this path that w was kind of like a, a a penny wise, a pound foolish. It, it led to higher profits and higher brand awareness, but it ultimately led to dissolution of their brand and, in, in the case of Brooks Brothers, at least, um, bankruptcy. Uh, and, and that is the, the whole outlet mall culture. So um, ab about 10 years ago, when we had the um, 2008 crisis, uh, people were in a very bad mood. The stock market had crashed. Companies were going under. And they started to, to see all these kind of 40% off sales. And they got used to this concept. 
And uh, the outlet mall was also something that was arising in the uh, in the '90s. Um, I can remember when I was uh, a young person, the original outlet malls uh, were kind of true out true to themselves outlet malls. I remember when we would go to Jackson Hole, Wyoming to go skiing as a family, there was actually a Ralph Lauren outlet mall. And there you could find, say, last season's clothes or clothes that had a minor defect in them and were half off or something like that. But they actually were the high quality Ralph Lauren um, material and and clothes. They were the thing that you could buy in New York City, but now you could buy in Wyoming at 50% off, you know, nine months later. Uh, and it was great. But the outlet malls became a kind of Frankenstein's monster where people were so used to getting 20 or 40% off that that's all that they would do. And it's kind of like I'll, I'll, only a fool play, pays retail. And so they started buying more and more at the outlet malls. And then these companies again, they created this Frankenstein monster that had a life of its own. They started making items for the outlet mall. So they would, they, they would have some high end retail at, in, you know, their New York city branch or whatever. Then they would basically create, you know, Malaysian or China made uh, material that was just, you know, the kind of stuff that you would get at target or Walmart that they were selling at their out, outlet malls under the Brooks brothers brand. Um, I remember Ed and I actually we stopped by an outlet mall when we were visiting that, the sand yeah, yeah, dunes no, I was just say, of, that, uh, of I, Illinois. Was that, a, was that a Brooks Brothers? It was a Brooks Indiana. Brothers, yes. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, well, oh, that's you you saw well, it for the last time. That. It's kind of that like visiting Hagia that. Sophia before it fell to the Ottomans. Uh, you know, have the Brooks Brothers was. outlet mall in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sad. As you can see, I'm modeling the Canadian tuxedo by Brooks Brothers right now. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Canadian tuxedo, that's denim on denim, right? Denim shirt, denim oh, pants, great. cowboy hat. That's... Yeah. Well, there's a meme of me going around in this, and it's labeled Canadian tuxedo by Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers. Okay. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I mean, and so anyway, I don't want to make this too much like you know, avuncular advice, but I, I did a podcast uh, a couple of years ago where, where we um, just talked about menswear. I can, I can, re- I think we did that for under the paywall, but I'll just put it up for free now. It's a couple years on, but uh, we, we were, you know, strongly suggesting that you, you kind of change your mindset in terms of menswear where you, you purchase a, you know, shoes that cost, not cost $80, but cost $400 or more. And you know that this is going to last a decade, maybe even two, and that you're going to get them resold and so on. And it ultimately is kind of, it, it, it's ultimately cheaper because those $80 ones are not meant to last. You're going to buy those same pair of shoes eight or 10 times. And as opposed to buying one pair of shoes, it's better, you're more proud of it, and you can get it resold. Similar with a suit. A suit, you know, if it made in Italy, made in America, um, it, it, it's just a symbol that it's a real thing. It has a full body construction. You, you can get it tailored. You can wear this for 20 years. And it, it ultimately saves money, but it, it's more, I don't know, it's just about having a different mindset. And I, I, I think there is this kind of moment where, where most of America got in this mindset of, you know, I want to buy it at the outlet mall when I get 20% off. And it ultimately destroyed these companies that are kind of institutions because part of the Brooks Brothers aura is it's better. This is asp- it's aspirational. You are wearing the same thing that a pre- literally a president would wear. They uh, presidents are often wear Brooks Brothers or inaugurations, uh, and they just kind of diluted it to the point where it's like now it's just a brand. They're selling stuff you could literally buy at the same quality at Walmart, but it now has Brooks Brothers slapped on it. And I don't know. I mean, again. I'm, I for one, am sad. Well, the interesting thing though is one of the things I noticed is that um, menswear promoters themselves, like you can watch channels or read books or buy people who promote menswear who actually contribute to to this whole situation because they, a large portion of their writing is about how you can get it at the outlet on sale. Right. right? Almost universally, I notice that. And so it, it's in a weird way from the people who promote good menswear themselves has actually contributed to the situation where you're getting more and more products just made specifically for the outlet. Right. And so the, the actual prestige around buying like a, 
a five hundred dollar suit to a thousand dollar suit, right? So about a thousand dollars, and then that's kind of that mystique is going away because it's like, well, you could go on eBay, you could go on Etsy, you could wait for it to go on the outlet, right? And it's it's like this this process where they've actually contributed to the situation we're in now, right? And I mean, in some ways, it's not. I mean, I could I could be sad about it, but there is some good like smaller designers of good quality made menswear that you could find like online yes. and locally who are I guess benefiting from the situation and the symbolic aspect of wearing a nice suit in a, in a way is becoming stronger now because it's not as common anymore like casual yeah. clothing in the workplace for example is a big thing now but if you wear like a good tailored suit just on a normal day and go out to like a bar or a restaurant you're going to get treated very differently yeah and, but and then so it's it's just, in a way, yeah, it's sad, but there's also there is some benefits to it for you know men themselves who know how to wear good menswear, right? And appreciate the symbolic value and the social value that comes with it. It is sad. Um, I liked that shop. It had a lovely collection of cravats. There was a black gentleman who served me, and he was extremely polite, and he was, you know, made you feel at home and welcome, and looked after you. And he wasn't just some obnoxious teenage chewing gum, saying, you know, what do you want? You know, um, yeah. it was pro- properly, properly done, like a proper department store. And uh, I thought it was, I thought it was very nice. And it's a bit of a shame we had a thing in England called Dun and Co. Many years ago, it was quite mm-hmm. similar, focused on menswear suits tweed jackets things like this and of course the, the one problem is that the, that kind of clothing which used to be just normal you would go to work of course you needed a suit you would go for, on a date even and of course you would wear a suit in the, yeah. say the 80s or 90s has now gone and everything's casual um, um even among the three of us i'm the only person that's remotely smartly dressed and um this, this is this, this is cotton cashmere by the way keep these things you know, smart casual was this you got to keep I these agree. things going or they or they die out you know and eventually yeah. it becomes a, a state it becomes a statement to not have an open neck shirt yeah so that, that's how much we, we sort of reverse things and i think you make a very good point about this issue of quality um over over uh, cheapness or whatever mass production um the the idea that um what must it do to the psyche to to be surrounded by expensive nice but nice nice well-made things which 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 perhaps have been handmade but have, have a great deal of uh, i don't want to say love but a, a great deal of effort and planning and yeah. um and perfectionism put into them compared to being surrounded by things which have been cheaply made by foreign people at low prices will break easily and be chucked away yeah, and I wonder if that does this. And what does it like to wear clothes and to be surrounded by people wearing clothes, which again have been well made and have been, you know, family tradition and all this and sort of back into history and all this, and as against clothes which have just been mass produced in in Vietnam um, and and will be thrown away within a few years. And I think it's a similar effect Two to months. what does it do to the psyche to be surrounded by beautiful, well made. They don't even have to be old, but they normally will be old buildings with ornate decoration and whatever of the kind when i was in chicago that you saw these 1920s big skyscrapers with little details and all this you know all these little details carefully done to look kind of beautiful in their own way compared to what is done now just brutalist unpleasant architecture it's bad for the psyche it's bad for the soul and i, I think that's the that's it's another means of repression it's another means of putting people down of making them depressed of making them the kind of consumerist automata to to, to have them wearing these just cheap horrible chinese communist party overalls really um as as opposed to things that have been that have been well made and it's like the difference between having a nice you know lovely food in that whatever that club was you took me to as 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 <laughs> as compared to having a mcdonald's it's, yeah. it's that kind of difference and i think this is very, therefore it's for that reason in terms of just what it's doing to the culture i think it's very sad yeah well, i mean we can't ignore all the research around in cloth cognition right it's the idea there that the the actual clothing you're choosing to wear is that this symbolic representation actually does play a causal role in how you behave when it comes to your alertness or the way you deal with problems right like if you put a if you if you assign someone a task and give them a lab coat versus a painter's coat when they've done these studies is that they tend to miss more details when they're wearing the painter's coat and that's just like an easy example right but you also have a situation where 
the, the whole of culture, as Ed was saying, is moving towards this more bland, casual style, like sweatpants everywhere or yoga pants or whatever have you. We all know, right? You all see it when you go outside. Is It's this, the fact that consciousness and how we view ourselves is not just for our own bodies and for our own mental state and our own alertness. It's actually intersubjective. It's how we interact with each other and the symbolic meanings that we confer on it, right? And so then you have this situation where that kind of casualness is taking part in what I would say is a part of this, like as we're saying with brutalist architecture, this degradation of the human spirit, right? You don't see yourself as anything like higher than what you are because it's, and it sounds weird to say this, right? It does. When you're just, cause people like say you talk about clothes, but it's also true, right? Yes. It's, it does like matter. It's like social epistasis. It's like the, we, we, we humans are like bees. We're better compared to bees in a lot of ways than chimpanzees. We are used social. We are strongly evolved to these strongly bonded social groups in which we are deeply affected by everybody around us and in which our genes can only be optimally expressed if we are surrounded by other people who are genetically healthy. If we're surrounded by people that are unfit, then it will affect our genes and how our lives and our fitness. An example of that is depression. There was a very interesting paper on this many years ago, which found that depression is literally, literally contagious. If you are with somebody who is depressed for genetic reasons, then you can become depressed for environmental reasons just because you're right. with that person. And in much the same way, um, in a, in a minor way, but if you're with someone that just couldn't give a toss, who's just scruffy, who's just whatever, and just lives for the now, and couldn't care less, then that will that 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 will trickle throughout society. That will spread throughout society and and make the society, in, in a sense, less optimal, less f focused towards the transcendent, less focused towards the eternal. It's a very interesting um, thing in the UK called chapism. Uh, it's a, it's a light-hearted thing, but the the chap manifesto and the chap magazine and the idea is to kind of recreate the styles and mores of the 50s or whatever now uh, the chap manifesto it's very very funny i wrote an article for them once on how finland's president manaheim was a chap and um and it's this kind of thing that you're, you're that's what i try and do with the cravat and whatever is a yeah. spread a little bit of, 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 of positivity and of, of the throughout throughout society and that's what you're doing if you're if you're wearing these degraded kind of clothes then it's, it's just spreading this negativity this couldn't care less nothing matters and if you go interestingly to countries that are still religious societies or even just to eastern europe one of the things that's very interesting is the way in which they dress. They've got no money. They've got much less money than Western people have. But what they put money into. And one of the things that is, is very important to them is looking good, is, is dressing well, is, is kind of expressing a desire for something better and something um, eternal. Or in, 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 you know, it matters. What I, it, I, I matter and it, how we look matter. And, and you, you get this difference. In Finland, you see they just wear awful clothes, tracksuits and things like yeah. this whereas if you, if you go to southern europe it's very different how even india how they dress is really it matters and it sort of spreads a certain positivity i think yeah i and i think it's um it, it's also a bit ambiguous i i, I was I, I was thinking about the um famous slogan of uh patek philippe which is a a swiss uh watch manufacturer that uh it, it's it was something to the effect you don't own a Patek Philippe, you're simply its custodian uh, for the next generation. And that, that, you know, look, a lot of that is, is like middle class aspiration of they, they want to think of themselves as aristocratic or whatever. I think that's actually a good thing. So I, I don't really want to criticize it too hard. Uh, but it's also a true thing. Um, you know, you, you can buy um, a, 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 a Calatrava or a Nautilus and, and it, this should last 80 to 100 years at minimum. You should not, you should service it. You should absolutely not replace it as opposed to an Apple Watch or, or, or something that is built to last two years, three years at most. And then it's, you know, you can't even literally use the Apple Watch after four years because they're not supporting its software and it's just a piece of junk in your, in your drawer. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think that, you know, and, and that kind of mentality actually is something good that we should be promoting for the, the middle class. It was kind of like what I was saying, buy, buy a $500 pair of shoes that you're going to resole and own for 15 years. That's, that's reasonable. You'll wear them out at some point, but you'll actually have worn them out and not just toss them because they, they're made out of faux leather and they look like crap after 
you know, uh, three months. And there, there's this kind of like other aspect to it, which I, I think is, is also kind of mentioned. There's this, you know, I mean, that's the kind of positive value that luxury items can bring to someone's life. And I think it's actually very, it's a good thing. It, it's, it's deep superficiality. It, it, it's, it's a good kind of frivolous uh, kind of thing. But there's this other aspect to it of, of like almost the cargo cult of the, the, you know, really wealthy Arab sheik or, you know, um, you know, it massively indebted, you know, new, new money China where they buy a, you know, gold Rolex with, you know, gummy bear jewel jewels and encrusted diamonds. And it's almost this, <laughs> Like you're almost like taking it, you're, you're, you're ruining it because you know, the, the idea is that you can pass something on or you can wear kind of your watch. You can have a collection for, you know, 50 years and they're, they're almost taking it, the cargo culting it of, of like saying, you know, I own this, therefore I am, uh, as, as opposed to saying like, I'm, I'm going to treat this as a symbol of who I am. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there is a kind of, I don't know, uh, uh, you could say dark side or, or, or kind of awful oh, yeah, there is. side yeah, of that's it. True. There is a, um, but, but I, I think overall, like there, there's something that I, I, I would strongly say that there, there's, there's, there's a kind of like morality to the luxury sphere that is actually quite positive and that, that I, I would endorse for people. And I, and I think they should, they should aspire to be a part of it in the right way. Yeah, well, yes, they oh, sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. no, I was going to say, like, with the prudence to actually purchase a pair of shoes that's going to last you 15 years and spend a bit more does play into cultivating a certain kind of virtue that you do find in yeah. higher, higher quality menswear that you don't find if you're just trying to be frugal and in the moment all the time, right? Is it does cultivate a certain attitude that you're not going to get if you don't try to pursue an end like that, right? And it's why you look at a lot of like menswear guides and magazines is there the in between talking about the clothes and the fittings there's also a lot about you know gentlemen manners and virtues and how to talk to each other like the, these two things go hand in hand for a reason and i just quote from the chap manifesto a call to charms <laughs> for too long we have been the playthings of massive corporations whose sole aim is to convert our world into a gantuan shopping mall Pleasantry and civility are being discarded as the worthless ephemera of a bygone age, an age when men doffed their hats at ladies and children could be counted on to mind your Jack Russell while he took a mild and bitter in the pub, the twinkly-eyed tobacconist, the ruddy-cheeked pub landlord and the bewhiskered tea shop lady are being trampled under the blandness of the drive through hamburger chains. Customers are herded down such places with an alarming similarity to the way in which the cattle used to produce the burgers are herded into the slaughterhouse. Indeed. I'm going to order that book. I, I think that's that's <laughs> fun. I, I think we might even need to write a little bit on this subject. I think it's quite good. The other thing that I've learned from this podcast is that I think we should have a dress code. Um, so for, for many of my Sunday shows, uh, I hope you've noticed, Ed, I, I have worn a, uh, a casual blazer uh, just to wear it. I don't need to. Uh, we're going to go out, have fun with the kids later on this afternoon, dress down a bit, but still have a collar. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think we should have a, a dress code. Uh, we well, take our, like you... we take our, we take this seriously. We take ourselves seriously. <laughs>
You wouldn't mm-hmm. get you wouldn't get airports and things. You you wouldn't get that even in Britain. Mm-hmm. But in 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 the airport in Port Hardy, big 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 image of the Queen. Oh, well, that was impressive. Yeah, I like it. It's depressing to hear that people in Montana don't dress like cowboys, though. It's... 